Yeah, so you see, not very many of these, and it's the Gibson Theodore after Ted McCarthy. But let's have a listen first, and then I shall tell you how I can. Oh, yes. Uh, mm. Right, okay, let's go. So listen to those pickups and starting with the P90 because of course we've got two P90s, no coil splits. Well, obviously there's no coil splits, the single coils. So uh, yes, starting with the bridge. <laughs> And starting again with the bridge. Into the centre. McCarty thing, haven't we, over the last few weeks? Because uh, we had that PRS McCarty, and then that one that looks a bit like it, that's much less expensive. 
and uh, so soap bars two weeks ago, soap bars last week, soap bars again this week to go with the new haircut. And uh, yes, so Ted McCarthy. <sighs> The story with this is, so this was, although it's a new one by Gibson, uh, this was penned at the same time as the Flying V, the Explorer, the Firebird, and was it the Future or Future, all by Ted McCarthy. And Ted McCarthy was uh, really well known for uh, the um, design of the Les Paul, the SG, the 335, and really many of the best-selling ones that we know today. Uh, it also had a hand in the humbucking pickup too with Seth Lover. So what we got? Uh, so this is the custom shop one and there is also a standard one now that you can buy. The stand, I think the standard one is 2200 quid and that's got humbuckers and a stop tail and tunematic whereas this is from the custom shop and these were made in 2022 and they only released 100 and for some whatever reason best known to weirdy old gibson uh, 106 of each flavor and they came in natural red and black and so there are only this is one of 106 in the entire world uh, there are another 212 red and black ones knocking about somewhere. I like this, I like this. Alder. So, not, they're not famous for using Alder at all. Uh, so, Alder body, I like the stats at the top. So, you've got a mahogany neck with a hockey stick head. There is actually an official name for hockey stick head and it isn't hockey stick, it's something else. Banana? No, that isn't it. Anyway, uh, and you've got some vintage Clusen Deluxe tuners with mini buttons, which I really, really like. And so this design, as I say, harks back to 1957. Um, and it follows reasonably faithfully Ted McCarthy's initial drawing. It's a rosewood fingerboard with dot inlays. It would have been nice if they'd have put something a bit fancier in there, but hey-ho. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure that all of that, that the headstock inlay and the dot inlays on the neck, I'm pretty sure they're mother of pearl. So yeah, you've got a mahogany neck. You can have a look at the serial number if you like. It tells you the seven at the start of it, tells you that it's a 57 reissue, even though it was never made in 57. But it was designed then, certainly. And the leading two, I think, tells you it's 2022. 20, and then whatever's left, is it, is it 61 or something? Uh, just tells you where it was in the production run. Okay. Um, on the body, which is beautifully figured. It does say in the blurb, the fact you'll see some photos back here of all the case candy that you get. And the, and the case is delicious. And... The booklet that comes with it says Archive Collection. I've never seen that before, so I can only hope that if that that if that's the start of the Archive Collection, that there's going to be other stuff like this on the way. So, basically, the story goes something... This might not be strictly accurate, but I won't be far off. Uh, they were going through a skip that came from Kalamazoo and they found this drawing in it that Ted McCarthy did in 1957. They went, oh, we've not seen that before and we've not made it, so let's make it and call it a Theodore. Well, of course, Theodore, Ted is short for Theodore. And so they decided to use Alda and of course, we've got the walnut strip down the center. <sighs> the thickest scratch plate in the universe, it's about a million ply. Uh, you've got a three position toggle switch down here, two tones, two volumes with thumb bleeders and the exhaust pipe in the front here. Toggle switches, so it's a little bit like a little bit like an SG really, isn't it, in terms of layout, and it saves you rousing out right back here. But what a really, really groovy design. I absolutely adore it. It's like a bit of a star at the top, isn't it? And um not at the bottom. So yes, but a beautiful thing. I do love the way that Gibson do quirky stuff. Uh, 
beautifully figured alder body, which has got a really, really thick varnish on it, and that uh, lovely walnut stripe up the center. So, yeah, only 106 of each color made, 318 uh, all toned worldwide, and like I say, now you can get one that looks like it, that's not custom shop, that's just a Gibson standard with humbuckers. And so the wrap round bridge, as it turns out, the intonation's bang on, or as bang on as intonation can be on a fretted instrument anyway. And it um, has intonated beautifully, but you can, of course, get one with saddles, can't you, if you if you're really funny about that kind of thing, but I wouldn't change anything. This is absolutely collector's grade. It's never, ever been played by a human, only by me. And uh, it, will be, uh, it will be up for sale shortly, uh, but I couldn't wait, to be honest with you, I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. It's um, just because they've not been made before, and it's a, an, it's a beauty. Oh, I, by the way, it weighs so long. Uh, and the pickups are popping out about late sevens or something like that. It's a dream to play. Really, really nice. And ways not, you can definitely giggle out of this. Right, okay, I've offered on enough. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Adios, amigos. Tara. <laughs>